So welcome to today's uh, workflow. And today's workflow has to deal with payment marking. And when it comes to payment marking, we are working, we are looking at payment marking like existing payment markings. Yeah. So lots of times, you know, you're gonna need, you know, payment markings for specific um, uh, things in your project. The first two might be for, uh, you know, proposed, uh, like, you know, when you have to deal with markings, you know, into a marking uh, production file. Let's say if you do like an existing person proposed the marking, remove all the existing markings and proposed markings. And sometimes you might need the markings, you know, the, the, the other alternative, you might need the markings for uh, traffic control. Yes, yeah? so when it comes about traffic control, you are supposed to have the payment markings in the traffic control so you can show like how the, you know, how the traffic flows, yeah, for your traffic control plans. So because we thought it's imperative for you to have a payment marking base for an existing one. Of course, there's an also proposed one for the places where you proposed. But if you don't have anything proposed on your base file, on your, let's say on your project, you're going to need the existing marking base file anyway for your traffic in Cholia. So that being said, we're going to start, you know, how to create, you know, our payment marking base file. Yeah? And the workflow is online and uh, it's specific uh, to like a stack AutoCAD. So if I look at the workflow online, you're going to see that we're going to go pretty much through the workflow, you know, it has starts with the right template and then it has like, you know, specifically like, you know, adding the, the data or, you know, create, you know, generate the data and put it the right layers and set it up the right way, the way we are supposed to be to show up, uh, you know, for the production purposes. Yeah. Now uh, we're going to go through this process a little bit, you know, and do it, you know, the, the default way, like the stack way. But then I'm going to show you also like the two palettes that come with the custom configuration. They're going to help you for you to do exactly this uh, type of work. Yeah. So rather than, you know, selecting all the data, change it, you know, and uh, uh, change the width and so on, all this stuff we're going to take it, be taken care of by the, in, by the um, tool in the tool pattern. Yeah. So let's start creating the payment marking base file. The payment marking base file, we're going to start from a template and according to the uh, workflow, it starts from, you're going to go browse templates, you go to base files, in the project, you're going to find, you know, the you know, as, as always, you have to figure out if it's a 2D, it's a 3D file, it's a 2D file. And if it's a 2D file, you know, it's going to start with an X, yeah. So the, the 3D file starts with a D, the 2D file starts with an X dash. And then you're going to look for the payment marking base file. And here, if you look at the workflow, you're going to see that the payment marking base file starts with a VM site, yeah. So this V for survey, kind of, and then M for marking and site. So it to be a 2D project ID survey marking site, yeah, existing marking site and based on. So I've been looking here for the template. I'm going to take that one and copy, you know, copy the, um, you know, the name, because once you create, you know, once you start the template, you're going to create your name, you have to file, it's called drawing one, or drawing two, so on, you can see up on the top. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to save this uh, file in the right location. And for us, you know, it to be under the project CAD reference DWG folder. And I'm going to put in here this, and then I'm going to take the PROJ away and call it SSRD. You know, our ID for the project is Spicer Springs Road, and that one is the four digit ID, it's SSRD. Yeah? Now, once you, go, once you do that one, I'm going to click save. The next step is for you to have to figure out where is your project location, you know, and now before you, you do that one, you know, always put the question like, you know, what type of file is this type? Besides being a 2D file versus 3D, is this one it's a grid file or it's a surface file you know so it does it use grid coordinates or uses surface coordinates or ground coordinates yeah if the data as i said before in the previous workflows if the data it's you know century it's scaled then the the grid versus ground the grid versus surface the data are going to be more or less like in the same location but you know if the data is scaled you know from a point that is zero zero then the data will have to you know you'll have to do the scaling of the base file between the base file together yeah and you're going to see this one how it translates in here now, when it comes about this type of file, this type of file is a grid file because we are mapping data from the grid. Yeah. So, because of that one, you have to know, like, when you attach, you know, at the base files, if you have a grid file, you're going to use the one to one ratio. If you attach, you know, a ground file, you're going to have to, especially if it's from zero to zero scale, you're going to have to use, you know, the scaling and scale it, you know, back to grid. Yeah. So, if it's a ground, you're going to scale back to grid. So, let's go and start with attaching a couple of base files to kind of have an idea. So I'm going to come in here to use the xref, so you can use the xref or xattach p, that's our custom command, but I'm going to use the xref for the first one, attach wg, and I'm going to go here to the project, and our project will be in the shell, in the OneDrive shortcut, in the SharePoint, so it'll be projects, find, you know, the project, find CAD, the reference files, the wg, and I'm going to attach, the first one I'm going to attach in is the ARIEL base file. We have an ARIEL base file because 
This is one of the most important base file you're going to you can use because you can use it for to digitize the pavement markings. So the data, so as I said before, like you can start you know, the base files, you know, in any word that you want. However, you're going to see that this base file has a prerequisite and a prerequisite for this one at this point, we already have the aerial base file. I took, took care of this one in the previous workflow. So I'm going to attach in here the VI Eddy. Now, when it comes about attaching base, base file, I'm going to say like, you know, I'm in a grid base file, I'm attaching another grid or ground. I'm attaching a grid base file because the VI Eddy, it's a grid. So in here, I'm going to have to change anything. So I'm going to say overlay. If you want to see, like, I'm going to do a zoom extent. If you want to see the location of your project, you know, if it's actually, you know, the right way, you can see that once I attach, you know, the, you know, the base file, if I go here to, you know, geolocation, I'm going to say here map, let's say map uh, hybrid. You're going to see that the data aligns, yeah, more or less, because, you know, it's like, you can see like in here, you know, this is my aerial, and this is the, you know, the being aerial, the all of the aerial, that aligns. So I know it's a grid to grid, you know, conversion. So it's a, you know, true one-to-one, -one, you know, attachment. So I'm going to say map up in here. I'm going to go to external references. I'm going to unload. I'm going to just, you know, keep the six inch resolution aerial. And so I'm going to come in here, look for the 12 inches. So I'm going to take here, I'm going to say unload. I'm going to keep only the higher quality aerial, the six inch, because this is the one I'm going to use for our purposes. I'm going to say control S to save it. The other base file I was going to attach it here to be like a little bit kind of at this moment, you know, you, you not necessarily have to attach any other base file because you already have one base file gives you a reference. But you can come in here and you attach them, let's say maybe maybe the VE site, so have it as a reference. So attach the WG. I'm going to attach, you know, this is the planimetric LiDAR base file. Click open. And this one again, it's a it's a grid to grid, grid to ground. It's a grid to grid. It's should one-to-one conversion. I'm going to see overlay and it's good. You're going to see if it aligns the right way. You're going to see the design here, you have the line work and so on. Now, um, and maybe the last one, you know, kind of give you an idea like, you know, grid versus ground. I'm going to attach in here the survey file. So I'm going to come in here, attach the V site. When I attach the survey file, you're going to know, you, you know that the survey file, it's a ground, yeah? So because it's a ground, if I attach it to the one-to-one -one ratio, we're going to see here overlay, you're going, to, you're going to see that, you know, you're going to come offset it from the location in the grid, yeah? So because of that one, you're going to have to take this base file and you'll have to scale it down you know, by the scale factor from the survey, and by scale factor from the survey, you can always find it, you know, in the in the you know in the notes, because you know the survey notes. And right here you can see this is a scale factor. However, because the scaling is done, as I said before, you know, on the axis from the left bottom to the top right. However, because this one is like a scale from zero zero, it, it moves this way. That means you know for you to move it back to grid, you're gonna have to apply an inverse of that scale factor, yeah. And the inverse of 1.0011. You're going to take this one and divide, you're going to take one and divide it by this one and give you the inverse of the scale factor. And that one to be the following. I'm going to take in here this uh, survey base file, you know, to properties. And the properties I'm going to scale here for the scale, I'm going to be a 0 0.99989. There's the inverse. And the scaling is done on both X and Y. So it will be here 0 0.999989. And there you go, you're going to see that it looks in the right location. It looks, you know, pretty much it comes in the right location. Now, if I come in here, I'm going to say extend references. I'm, I'm going to unload, let's say, for a little bit, you know, I'm going to load, you know, both uh, the VI, V7, VI80. You can look at the survey and it's like, hey, do I have in the survey, in the ICDC, do I have any, like, favorite markings, you know, that I can use? And you can see, like, most of our surveys that we, that we receive, they do not have favorite markings because the one is not a feature, like, you know, a hard scale feature, it's just, you know, a feature on the ground. So unless it's requested from the, you know, surveyor to map the markings, some surveys they do not, you know, they do it, you know, so they don't provide the markings. So because of that one, you pretty much you can skip, you know, on the first part of the workflow. And you're gonna see in the workflow, it tells you for you to use the survey payment markings. Yeah. So if you have any data that surveyed, you must describe by you quite severe, you are supposed to put it in the right layers. You are supposed to take it, put it in the right layers, and do all this stuff with yeah. So at this moment, and this 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 case, you know. This is not going to be a likely case, you know, because you're not going to get, you know, a lot of time, you know, data from the surveyor when it comes about very marking. So because of that one is not going to skip on this step, you know, but we're going to go to the next step and that one is pretty much, you know, digitizing the payment markings, yeah. So what do you do? What do you have to deal with the survey payment marking or the digitized, the GIS, you know, payment markings? The data is supposed to be processed in the same way. It's only that the placement of that data is different, you know. So if, when it comes about, you know, the the survey pair markings, they're going to use the V stripe layers. However, the, you know, the digitized the GS, the digitized uh, or the GS uh, markings, the one that you know actually digitized from aerial, 
we'll format the GIS sources. We're going to use a VI to the area. So all the survey going to be using the V dash, and all the digitized, we're going to use a VI layer. So if I go here in the bottom, you can see that I have the section for digitized print markings, and we use the VI layers. Yeah. So there's a difference between them. However, everything is exactly the same way. So knowing that one, we can work in the survey. It looks like we do not have any survey. We do not have paper markings. So because of that one, we can, we can go here safely and going to say unload, you know, the survey. So pretty much we're done on the survey. I'm going to focus on, you know, right now we're going to focus on digitizing the data from the GIS or from the area. So at this point, I'm going to go to external references. I'm going to look at the BI area. I'm going to reload it because this is going to use it, you know, for us to digitize the data. So I'm going to say you can show S to save it. I'm going to start, you know, focusing on digitizing the data, as I said before. Now, when it comes about digitizing the data, you have to know, you are supposed to be familiar with how, you know, like what type of pavement mark is in the field, what's their width in the field, you know, like if they are four inches, if they are six inches, if they are eight inches, if they are 12 inches or 24 inches, yeah? So if you, are, if you don't know that one, you know, look at the workflow and you're going to kind of get an idea of that one and I'm going to, maybe I'm going to put, you know, at the end of the workflow, like add, add it to the part of the workflow, like in the PDF, I'm going to add, you know, like examples of what is what, you know, what you typically find, you know, but typically in the workflow, you know, you're going to kind of have, you know, a pretty good idea of which line width, you know, or width for the per marks there are, if they're like short, you know, width or value, you know, like uh, wide width and stuff, per markings, yeah. So the first big, we're going to start, you know, maybe we're going to start, you know, one right now with the easiest one to mark, you know. And the easiest one to mark will be maybe the crosswalks, yeah. So the crosswalks in here, you can see that I have like, you know, these are the crosswalks, and there are two types of crosswalks, you know, that, you know, they're in the city. And um, now this is the new type of crosswalks, like, you know, that looks like, you know, the space, in the, the 24 inch, that space, I guess, you know, based on the width of the lane. You can see like, you know, if you look at, if you look at the detail, you can see that, you know, these ones, they're not even, like, you know, there's no like even space in between them, you know, they're, they're, they're placed based on the width of the lane. You know? So the width of the lane, if you can see from here to here, based on the time, you can see that you're gonna have like a, like a, uh, like a 24 inch uh, line here, you're gonna have one in the center and one at the edge of the star. So pretty much when, when the trucks or when the cars can come by or you know go for and stuff, they're not gonna go on top of the paint, you know. So this one helps with um, it helps with uh, maintaining you know the, the marking for a long time. Yeah. If it'd be like you know on the way of the traffic, you're gonna discard pretty fast, you're gonna you know vanish away and people get to come maintain it, you know, add it again, you know. So because of the one. When it comes about this type of crosswalks, you're gonna see that you know lots of people are gonna say, hey, why we cannot use an array, you know, and you cannot use an array because you know they are not equally spaced. Yeah? So because of that one, you will still have to mark every single line. Yeah. As I said before, how they are placed, they are placed you know at the edge of the travel lane, in the center of the travel lane, at the edge, center, edge, center, you know, like you know, edge, center, edge, and then so on. Yeah, pretty much it keeps on stuff. So knowing that one. As I said before, this is the first type of crosswalk, like this is a 24 inch, and the second type of crosswalk is the old crosswalk that is replaced. And this is this type of crosswalk right here. This one right here, this lane, and this line is a 12 inches wide, yeah. So so, so the crosswalk is 24, this is a 12 inches and so on. So we're gonna start in here by mapping, mapping for the 24 inches. And we're gonna use, you know, what, you know, like how would you do, like, you know, if you do not have any of the tools, you know. And I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna go to the manager, First of all, you are supposed to set up the right, you know, layer for it. And right now, we do not have any survey layers. We're going to use the digit, you know, the VI survey GIS uh, layer group or filter. And here, we're going to look for the striping 24. So I'm going to come in here, VI 20, you're going to find 24 inch. This is the crossing. This is the layer you're supposed to put, to put it on. I'm going to make it active. So set it current. Once you set it current, uh, I'm going to go here and take away the layer manager. There it goes away. And I'm going to start drawing. Line work. So I'm going to say here, PL, we always use polylines. We do not use lines, we do not use arcs and so on. It's always polyline because for polylines, you can add a width. And we do not use line weights, we use widths. You know, so pretty much, you know, it's true on the ground width. You know, so if it's 24 inch on the, in the field, you're going to actually add the 24 inch or a two foot wide, you know, uh, polyline. So we always use polylines. Yeah. So now in the one, I'm going to come in here, put, you know, this panel right here, the center of, you know, the data that you have in here. And you see when you add the polyline, you can see that you know it, it doesn't have any width to it. Yeah. 
that's because you know here to set the balance of the properties and you're going to change in here the global width from zero that's right now at this stuff you're going to change it to the units that used by you know civil engineering for for CAD and that one is in feet you know pretty much everything in AutoCAD you know for civil 3D is defined in feet so because you know in the time 44 inch translates in two feet yeah so let's say two and there you go you have your pay, first payment mark yeah now once you have this one you can take in here gonna take you know you copy the cross so you might just take it and then copy the cross you know you know whatever you see you know in the aerial the payment marking for the 24 inch you know so this is one way you can do it you know now, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want to, let's say, to change the width afterwards, you know, pretty much you can, lots of times, you know, I can put it here, I'm going to put the power line, let's say I'm going to put the power line, so I'm going to put the first one, I'm going to put the second one, so put, you know, you know as, as close as you can to the center. Now, once I, you know, I put the two of them, you know, I can always say, come in here and select, let's say, I can come in here and select similar, because I know that all the power lines in the same layer, so as I select similar, I can go out at the end, I'm going to go to properties, and change the global width for all of them. This is one of those berries, this because you have four uh, four of them that have the two foot and the other one have zero, so we can so we're gonna have a vary. So I'm coming here, changing you know all of them to two. So you don't necessarily have to like you know you know change one you know, and then you know change the other one and so on. You can you know pretty much you know as I said you can copy the first one across. You can put them you know line global width of zero and then you know select similar at the end and change them to the line width of two. Another way to do them it would be like you know according to the workflow. You can you know set the layer to the right layer and then change the variable that's called p line p line width so by change p line width you know i can say right now i set up to zero i can change it to two now every time i draw a polyline it's going to be drawn with a width of two so i don't have to worry so pretty much you know i set the current layer to two and you can see that like you know i can draw all the polylines lines with the line work pretty much with the width of two yeah make sense of this stuff yeah and i'm done with this one so that's one of stuff, you know, at the end of the stuff, you know, if you have to change, you know, make sure that you change the pattern width back to zero, you know, so pretty much you can change the pattern width, you know, variable for the cat file to two, and then just come in here, P line width, P line w, w ID, and then change it back to zero once you do that stuff. You know. Control, you know, stay. So I'm down this way. So that's one way for you to do it, like actually multiple ways you can actually actually build the data. It's, it's only that, you know, the data is like at the end, all the data should look, you know, identical, should look the right way out. So it doesn't matter what you use, whatever feels better for you, don't use it, and at the end, make sure that it looks the right way. Now, this is the stock AutoCAD. You know, so if you have stock AutoCAD, you need to, you know, you do not have the city of Aston, uh, city of Aston configuration, this is how you're supposed to do it, you know. However, if you use the city of Aston configuration, you're gonna see that in here we have the two palettes for it, you know. So I got the two palettes. I'm gonna come in here and change. So you can go, you know, you can right click on the, you know, on the name of tool palette, or you can right click on the bottom where you have the, you know, the icon, and you go to the city of Austin, and then go to the right category, and right now we're mapping digitizing data. So I'm going to come in here to GIS, and the GIS, we're going to move in here in the tab to the GIS marking. And the GIS marking, you're going to see that, you know, under the 24-inch line work, right now you're going to see that I have the crosswalk, yeah? So this is the crosswalk and stuff. So, it's not, so now if I click on this one, you're going to see that actually I'm going to lay the line work. That's only the 24 inch, you know, in the right layer. So it is like, you know, it's the following. For this one, if you have to put in, if you have, if you have to work on this stuff, you have first you have to set up the current layer to the right layer. Then you're going to put the power lines, then you're going to change the width and stuff. You know, now let's, let's go in here and show you, you know, what's the benefit of the tool palette. If I go here back to, let's say, layer zero, I'm going to change the current layer to layer zero. You're going to see that if I have the tool palette, if I say crosswalk, you're going to see that it changes the layer. Right now, it changed the layer for the time of the command. And then once the command ends, it goes back to the previous layer. Yeah? So that's the benefit. It doesn't matter which layer you set up before, like stuff, when you use the tool, it says the right layer, and then it puts the data the right way. And then once it's done, it goes back to whatever it was about previously. Yeah? So, so by the stuff, you know, that's pretty much, you know, that's one option for you to do it, you know, maybe this is the one I could recommend if you're using the configuration, but you're more than welcome to use any other tools, you know, like to kind of, but the ideas like in all the data is supposed to look the right way. Yeah? So I'm gonna come here crosswalk, and then I'm gonna put it right in here, pretty much, and I'm gonna put map the next, the next one, and the stuff. So when I, when I press the first one, you know, maybe sometimes it's much faster to just copy it across. So I'm gonna copy that one, copy in here, Looks like, you know, one is right there, and so on, two, two, like that, and okay, like stuff. 
So that's easy on the crosswalk. Yeah, we kind of make it you know fast. You know, you can make the crosswalk as long as it's dry layer and uh, use the right tool. You know, if you enter the right tool, you know, you can make it dry layer. But make sure that the end the lights in the dry layer and is the right width and so on. Yeah. So this is for the sidewalk. You know, for the crosswalk. The next one gonna be the star bars. Yeah, when it comes about star bars, you can see back in here I have a specific layer. You know, like yes, they are both 24 inches. However, we want to be able to differentiate in between what is what. You know, so if I if I have to select all the star bars, I can select them independent of the crosswalks. Yeah. So because of that one, we have like here under the VI section, we have a layer that's called 24 inch star. You know, this stuff you're gonna make it current, and then in here you're gonna say you know pretty much you're gonna say P line width. I'm going to change it here to zero, no, to two, sorry. And you're going to see a polyline. And you're going to pretty much you know, put the star bar. I don't think it's going to be able to. So that's one way to do it. You know, you can put all the star bars, change the properties to all them to two. I still have this dry layer. Or you can use the tool in here to say like star bar. And you see the star bar, you're going to see right in here. If you, if you use the tool in the tool palette, what happens in here, they change the, you know, it changes the polyline with the right stuff. However, it doesn't change it back this time. So for example, if I come in here and change it, let's say the layer tool, I want to maybe to put the four inch or some kind of stuff, or maybe uh, six inch, yeah? If I come in and put the six inch, you can see that it puts it still at 24. So this is the disadvantage of the tool palette. You know, it, it keeps like the last tool that's, you know, that's uh, used, yeah? So because of that one, you use the tool palette, you know, like it works fine. If I, if I, if I put, you know, say I put six inches and I want to put the file line in here, this is the 24 inches, you can change it back to six inches. However, if I come in here and say like I want to put a 16-inch polyline in here, we'll put you know continuous white. You can see that they put the six inches and you know pretty much change the variable to the stuff. So if I put any polylines afterwards, that's six inches. However, you are supposed to make sure that you know you know understand the polyline width variable and how does it apply. So if it doesn't the right way, if all the line works is placed at two foot wide, that means you know the P line width was changed from the default of zero to some other default, or like two feet or one foot or so on. Yeah? So because of that one, I'm going to leave this one in here and just make sure that, you know, the P line width at the end of any of the tool is set back to zero, just to make sure that, you know, everything is good on the top. So I put the star bars, I should have to do the star bars. The next one is going to be, let's focus on maybe the, let's focus on the the four inch. Yeah, so pretty much when it comes about, so this is the easiest one, the star bars. Now I'm going to focus here on the four inches. You know, when it comes about four inches, the most common Table marking for four inches is the delineator lane. Yeah, so this is the dot, the you know, pretty much the dash dot, and it's called, I guess, it's a 1030 because it's a 10 foot, it's a 10 foot long by 30 feet in like a dash. Pretty much is a 10 foot dash and 30 foot spacing. Yeah, so because of that one, knowing that one, it's just like it's very important for you to know the widths of the typical type of table marking and then you know what they should be like. Yeah. So for us, you know, like when it comes about like you know that type of paper marking, I'm gonna look in here. I'm gonna start. You know, let's say I'm gonna look at this location. I'm gonna start with this. You know, at this place. So if you have to do like the manual way, I'm gonna go to the layer manager, go to tool palette. Sorry, to the layer manager, go to the PS striping, and the one that you're gonna use for the four inch. You can see that there's a section here that's called 10 30. That means it's a 10 foot dash and 30 foot spacing. Make it current. Once it's made current, you can see here a power line and you can start drawing too much. You can go on top of this stuff, you know, but before you do a power line, of course, you can do it afterwards too. Just set your P line width, P line width to us, you know, the four inches is point three feet. Yeah, this, you know, there's a four inch. Now, once you get one, we are in the right layer. We're going to see a power line. I'm going to start drawing pretty much, you know, my four inches. I'm going to come in here, draw it, you know, so pretty much follow on the aerial the best you can on this one and like that. Now, some people are gonna see at se second point, maybe I'm gonna put like this, match it to the best of my ability, well, and so on, yeah. So the idea is like the following, you're gonna map, you know, all the payment marking that's within like, you know, your pony scale and whatever is needed for your traffic control. You don't need to map, you know, the whole marking for the whole area, for the whole city. You just need the, you know, you just need to map all the marking that's needed for you for the project. And most of the time, as I said before, for 20 scale is the area in this green, you know, within this green uh, outline. Or if you have a traffic control, sometimes, you know, you might need maybe marking that's, you know, past the green area because you are, you know, especially if you have a detour, you're going to need, you know, like a bit more markings. Yeah. So just mark or just map the, the area that you need for the project. Yeah. So 
knowing that one, let's look in, let's look at this location and see something that's stuck in it. Let's see that this line cut doesn't look the right way. It's like, hey, I look at that one in why it's like, you know, so, you know, it doesn't look like a, you know, 10, 30. It looks like, you know, more like a 20 or 30 something. Yeah? This is because in here, you have to always finish, and I'm going to come back to it at the end. When it comes about the, um, the pale markings, the pale markings are non annotated line styles. You know, back pretty much, you know, if you're comparing, you know, like a pale marking, if you compare it with uh, erosion, let's say with, um, say, overhead electric line type, delay overhead electric line type is an annotative line style, while a pale marking is always the true on the ground marking, you know, so because of the time you have a conflict, you know, it's like, you know, because AutoCAD uses annotative when it comes about, you know, line types and text and so on, but you tell you have to tell AutoCAD, you know, yes, I use the annotative, but I don't want this line types to be at scale, you know, I don't want to use that the scale, you know. So because of the time when it comes about, you know, the first thing when it comes about mapping at the beginning, you always have to change the the scale of your uh, cat file from a 20 scale in here, annotation scale, you're going to have to change it to a one scale because you are mapping on a one to one. You know, we don't apply any annotations. When you set it to one, in a way, it's like you know, pretty much it's like you know, there's nothing to scale. You know, it's a two one to one. I'm going to say here in gen, and you're going to see it looks like this. You know, now we're going to have to look in here a little bit and see what happens in here. Why it looks like this? It's because I'm putting the wrong layer. See, right, this is the 204. It's supposed to be placed in the 1030. I change the 1030. Make sure that the current layer is the right layer. So I'm going to come in here and make, make it current, whatever. So now, once the valor is current, you're going to see that. Uh, come on, go back. Or maybe I'm going to close it so it doesn't show. There you go. You're going to have the, you know, the, you're gonna have the line tapping, uh, line tapping and display the correct way, you know, on one scale. How are we going to see that in here? It doesn't look the right way, you know, it's, it still looks like it looks like pretty good, but here again, it looks like a very solid one. This is because also the line types are supposed to have a line type generation enabled. So what, what it does is like, you know, pretty much it applies the line type definition for all the vertices, you know, so it pretty much skips, you know, the vertex, you know, so it's like this regards the inner stuff. So if you come in here and see that, you know, I have a vertex in here. So what the software does, you know, without line type generation enabled, when it comes to this stuff, it starts to region, you know, generate the line type again, you know, for the next segment, and then again, you know. So by using the line type, you know, the line type enabled, you know, line type generation to enable, you're gonna skip, you know, the vertex, like you know, apply the line type, you know, passing through the uh, passing through the vertices. Yeah. So if I go here to properties, you can see that here's line type generation is disabled. I want to change that, you know, I'm gonna set it in the power line, and then I'm change it to enable, and you're gonna look, you know, close enough to the right way. Now, of course, in here I can come and, you know, adjust a little bit of stuff. It looks like maybe I should have adjusted a little bit of stuff. So I can take it in here, maybe adjust this one a little bit. Uh, it's a convert, you can convert to an arc if you want. There you go. So it makes a, bad, a little bit better, yeah? So this is one way to do it. You know, you can start pretty much, you know, you can set the rock and layer, set the pylon widths to 0.3 feet. And draw the line, pretty much draw the power lines and make sure that that line type generation is enabled for each of the, you know, for each of the line. So of course you can select all the line at the end and make, you know, and change you know, all of them at the end. So you don't have to worry about, you know, doing, you know, as you go. But you know, make sure that you change that one or stuff. So that's one way to do it. You know, there's a stack or the stack way, pretty much, you know, like the manual way. If you want to use you know, the two pallets, you're gonna find it under here under the four inch line work, and it's right in here. This is a 10 inch dash 10 space. And that two options, one of them is the white and the other one is the yellow. Yeah? The one you're going to use is the white, the other one is the divider for the center lane. So I'm going to come in here for the 10 inch dash, you know, space white. I'm going to click on that one. And let's start in here, maybe mapping all this stuff on this side in here. So I'm going to go to here, select like this location. And let's see that it already starts placing. So I'm going to take in here, move it to here. And we're going to go, you know, pretty much you know, keep, keep mapping. And it's much easier to map in CAD versus, you know, a GS because, you know, in CAD you have all the tools, you know, to map it, you know, the, you know, the right way. But as you can see, adding here, second point, an arc for second point, the second point will be on that one. And you can pretty much keep, you know, mapping your way. There you go. Of course, it doesn't look the right way. Go to properties, choose the line type generation here to enable, and you're good on that one. So this is how you map, you know, the, you know, the center. Uh, the center divider, yeah, the four inch line work, yeah. So we are done with the four inch in a way. This is the four inch wide, you know, there's a typical what you're going to map. 
The next one I'm going to map in here is going to be, let's look in this area, going to be the eight inches, you know. So here, like, every, every time when you see, like, a, like a churn lane that has, like, a continuous line for next to it, you know, that's typical an eight inch, you know. So this one here to be an eight inch wide. This one is an eight inch wide and so on. So knowing that one, it's a simple, I'm going to come in here, go to the strapping white eight inches. Set it the current. Then I'm going to say P line width, P line width. Line with forever and change it here to 0.66 or 666. You know, there's you know what I'm gonna see that starts from 0.66, and then I'm gonna do a power line and I'm gonna you know map it from here to here. So map it from location to this location. This one is an eight inch. On the other side, I can use the two pallets and then coming here to the eight inches, and then from the eight inch, I'm gonna see the continuous white and the I'm going to map it up to this location. So there's the eight inches, yeah? Now, if we go around in here, let's maybe, let's figure out, do we have any other eight inches, you know? This is an eight inch, this is an eight inch, this is an eight inch in here, this is another eight inch in sauce, you know? This is a four inch, and actually, like, you know, the four inch, you know, the eight inches and stuff, this is another eight inch. So if I come in here, I'm going to go back again. Let's go, let's go this in the section. So I'm going to say the eight inch line work. And I'm gonna draw from here to here. From here to there. I'm gonna take away the um, snapping and I'm gonna put it through right there. So there's the four, there's the eight inches, yeah. Now uh, let's look at the next one. What you're gonna cover in here gonna be maybe the let's make you know the four inches in here. And then you're gonna see that we have another two in here. And that one I'm gonna go and I should like which one is that one. So I'm gonna to go to four inches, so be a four inch ten thirty on uh, white. I'm gonna maybe map it from this location up to here. The properties change the line time label. You don't you don't have to change it for the continuous lines because it doesn't affect them, but for the for the dash line, you know you have to change that one here. The next one here you're gonna find you know this is a six inch line because this one is a this one is a bike lane. More more like a divider and stuff or an edge. So it's easy. You can go here to the tool palettes. And you're going to find in here the six inch continuous white. And you're going to pretty much, you know, just map the six inch continuous up to that point from there to there. That's your six inch. Now in here, you're going to see that, you know, this is another line typing. It's a dash line type, you know. So now this this would be a typical, it's, 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 a, it's a six inch also. But you know, if you look in here, look and see that this one it's a two bar, it's a four, and then this one in here it's a two. Yeah, so it's a two, it's a two dash and a four spacing. So you're gonna go over here to the two palettes, and then in the four inch category, in the six inch category, you're gonna find in here the two four. Yeah, so two dash four space on the white. Take it from there and map it in the end file. It's been of, it's very easy on the plan, you know. Now, so we mapped, you know, the, the six inch stuff. We mapped, you know, this is the six inch for a bike lane. This is, a, you know, for a six inch stuff, you know. So they did his like, make sure that you have a good done saying the line with, you know, line, uh, line with, you know, for the, for, for the design. The other one here, gonna map in this location, gonna map, you know, the, the divider, the yellow, yeah. So the yellow one here, you're gonna see that it's not a single line. It's actually that two lines, you know. Now the line in here, you're you are supposed to know there are four inches, yeah, and about four inches in yellow. So now in that one, I'm gonna to go to the two pilots GS. I'm gonna find in here the four inch. I'm gonna find the four inch continuous on a yellow. And I'm gonna come in here now because we have two lines, you know, you could map in you know, both lines, you know, but it's easier to map in you know, the center line and then offset it two times, you know. So pretty much in here, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna map in you know, the center where the line work goes. You can see that it goes up to here and this is a chill lane. I'm gonna show how that one works on that one. So maybe I'm gonna map it, you know, up to this location. There's the center of you know the center line, and then from this one I'm gonna create you know two parallel lines you know. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna use you know a command that's called you know for us it's called the double offset, and it'll be the, the after this is I'm gonna put it you know I guess I'm gonna put you know 0.5. That means like a half a foot, and set the object to offset. I'm gonna say here this one, and you see like at the end is like you know gonna right click, and it creates you know two lines. You know pretty much you know, it duplicates the data to the left and to the right you know. So now the only stuff I have to do here left is to delete you know, the server, yeah? So I'll right there, I will have the center line, you know, the yellow one. Now, when it comes about here, you're gonna see that this is a churn lane in here. 
climatization lane, and this one for it is likely to be a yellow on the outside, and on the inside will be a 1030 on a yellow. So now knowing that one, I can come here to panel line. Maybe let's go in here, let's, let's draw the outside. So I'm gonna go here to the two palettes, or let's, if you don't use the two palettes, let's make it work you know, from here. So it'd be like uh, yellow four inches. Okay, a panel line. And I'm gonna be from here, from the end point. And I'm gonna map, you know, maybe up to here, just kind of give an idea, because I don't want to map in you know, all the stuff. So this is the outside panel line. And then knowing this stuff, I'm gonna take this one here, I'm gonna offset it, you know, and I guess, you know, it was uh, one foot, because, you know, we're offsetting all the stuff on both sides. Now this is gonna map, you can take it here and, uh, and you know, end it at the, the other one. And the only stuff I have to do this stuff, I'm gonna take this panel line and change the layer for it, you know, to be the 10, the 10 first. So I'm gonna go in here, and change it to the 10 frame. Here we have the inside poly line or the inside the line. Way. So the same way I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do, uh, I can do poly line, do the outside in here. I'm gonna put it, you know, maybe up to here for now, because that's what I'm gonna map in here. And then I'm gonna offset it, just maybe one foot in here, offset on the inside, and then change for it, you know, the stuff to be a 10 frame. And there you go, there's your turn lane, yeah. Other things that you might want to counter here, this is six inch. That's another six inch, you know, and the stuff in here is a 12 inches, and it's a chevron, yeah. So in here, if I have to map this one, I'm gonna go to the white six inches. And I'm gonna see here P line, P line, P line, P line, right there, and change this one to be 0.5. So I'm in the right layer, the line width, I'm gonna do a power line. I'm gonna map it you know, pretty much from here. So map, you know, that one, make you know as much as you can, you stuff right there. Now this time, uh, let me see how space is. I'm gonna say distance, let's say from this is from to here, looks like, you know, it's three feet apart. So I'm gonna say after this one, three feet. So that one, you know, it's good to go on that one. And then you're gonna have to map, you know, this, um, you know, this stuff, you know, and those ones vary at 12 inches on a chevron. So be a white 12 inch on a chevron, this is to the effort. Now once you get one, I'm gonna just uh, change the P line with one, because I start, I'm gonna say power line. And here you can turn on, uh, let's say to make it easier, you can go here to the snapping and turn on the nearest. By using nearest, it's much easier to map because I can say from here to here. Then I'm gonna right click to repeat you know, the command and so on. So pretty much you can go through the process, you know, and uh, mapping all the data that's in the. So I'm going to show you pretty much, you know, most of our common line work, the way we are mapped, you know, let's go, if you go along the design, you know, because, you know, this is the project we're going to use as a sample. You're going to see in here, we're going to have an eight, four, four. When it comes about it, this is an eight inch. Now this here, you're going to see that it has like an edge. You're going to see that's a six inches. So the mark the edges and stuff are going to be six inches. If you go around, you're gonna see that's an eight inch. Like here now, you're gonna see, you're gonna come to here. So what's, what happens in here? Maybe sometimes you might not be able to see in the aerial what happens in this, like, you know, maybe the best way for it to be, for you to kind of, you know, if you don't see from the air, very clear, and you have a very, you know, you, you, you have to have questions about it, like, you know, it's easy for you to go, you know, like to research on Google Street, you know, so if I go to Google Street, I'm gonna to go to the same location, because, you know, this one should be like close enough to, unless, you know, the stuff modified, you know, a lot. You should be able to see what's in there, what happens in there. So if I go in here, I'm going to go at this location. So this one gives you an idea, pretty good idea, like, you know, that solid yellow, you know, that you see, I started it actually about two, four inches, you know, and that's a four inch, and that's a 12 inches on yellow. So that's two, four inches and a 12 inches on yellow. It's not on, and that's on Chevron. So now in that one, you know, if I have to map this one, I'm gonna go to the, uh, you can go use the tools in here, you're gonna go to two palettes. Let's say I'm gonna use the two palettes to make it easier for you to get used to it. So be the four inches, it's gonna be the, it's a, what, the six inch. So it'll be a six inch on a yellow. I have a six inch? No, no, it's not six inch. What does this other part goes? Oh, there are four inches on yellow. Cause it's gonna start, so it'll be four inches on a yellow, fiber. I'm gonna come in here, like start from here. I'm gonna start you know, defining the outside. So go like this, like the, like the, to be an arc. And you're gonna be like pretty much, you know, be like second point, maybe, maybe the, follow the best as you can. 
like there. And I guess it lasts, it loses itself somewhere in here. Now, once you've you know, that one, you're going to just do an offset. And I guess maybe over one foot, but you know, I'm not sure that one. Might be less, maybe stuff, you know, so. Maybe for this one, maybe first thing I agree is enough uh, one foot, you know, but for the um, for the inside, we're gonna use the 0.66, you know, for you know, eight inches so point offset, offset, 0.66. Come on, offset, uh, no zero, offset, 0.66. Right there, it looks like you know better. So you have the you know first stop, and then I'm gonna go to two pallets. I'm gonna go to the 12 inches, and this is the 12 inches only yellow. Well, benches, a chevron, chevron on yellow. And then I'm going to just select from there to there. And there you go. This is your line work for the chevron. Yeah? And this one applies the same one. So if you go in here along, you see that this one, it's an 8 inch. And then you have the 12 inches on a white chevron. Yeah? So we're coming here. Just go to stuff, you know, there you go. We're going to go in here, but it's an 8 inch. Now this one, we like on the on the other side. We're gonna look at it. You know, betting about this four inch, four inches like double with uh, twelve inch on yellow. And as you come along in here, let's bet. You know, this stuff it's a six inch. This one is a six inch. And this one, we'll look at it. You know, to see what's that one. Yeah. So if I go along in here, let's look at this location where the st the stuff becomes uh, dashes, whatever. So you know, on this side in here, we're gonna have like uh, the six inches. I mean, it's identical. Let's maybe let's put in here. So I'm going to go to the two pallets. I'm going to go to the six inch line work. So I'm going to come in here with be continuous white. And I'm going to make it from here to here for now. If you can look at this stuff, so it is like, you know, just have to check, you know, the spacing, you know, rough spacing. It'll be like, you know, this is like a two by, looks like by, uh, might be a two by four by one. So I'm going to go to the two pallets and it's a six inch and be a two by four. And you start from here and make it, you know, up to that location. Of course, you can add in here, you can change it here to be an arc. Make it look bigger here, but you, you have it right there. Six inch, six inch, you're gonna go along again, you know, four inches with uh, the, you know, all the stuff in between. I don't foresee anything, any other type of line work that I see in here, but you know, all the type of liners that we have, you know, here that I already defined the two pallets. So just with stuff, of course, guiding the layers. So if I go to layer, I'm gonna say find the four inches and many of the you know two you know two two dash two spacing, uh two dash four, ten thirty, and many of the six inch, you know, stuff, you know. So pretty much you have all the stuff in here. But you also have those ones, you know, as a tool in the tool palette. So if I go down in here, I'm gonna look at this location. What am I missing? And maybe this one is like what I'm missing. So in here, if I have to map this location, I know that you know that one's a star bar, so I'm gonna go in the 24 inch. The star bar. I'm going to come from here to here. Then this one, it's a crosswalk on a 12 inch. So this is going to be a crosswalk, you know, we're going to shelve it. It's going to be a crosswalk uh, longitudinal. So we're going to go to here to here. I'm going to repeat, you know, the command from here to here. And then you can say maybe from endpoint, if you want to start, you know, because typically I keep them, you know, separate. It'll be from here to here. And then from the end point to us on here. So pretty much, you know, make all the stuff in here. Now this are back uh, cat tracks, and I guess this one might be, let me see if I go get stuff in distance. Check the distance of this would be a two, and I guess it's a two by two. It's a two by two. I guess this one's about a four inches, you know, but I'm this one a four inches. So I'm gonna go in here, find you know, the four inch and be like, you know, it's a white on a two by two space. So just start with this location. I'm gonna put the arc second. And put the second and be like a little right there. And, and in that location, there you go. You have the, you know, you have the cat tracks and you can find there too. So this is about, you know, the, um, when it comes about, you know, the line work, you know, make sure that you know which line work is, what the width, and place it in the right area. That's, you know, as easy as that one. Now, when it comes about symbology, it's even, let's say, maybe it should be even easier, yeah? Because the two palettes are there for you to assist you, yeah? Of course, you know, I can show you like in how to insert them from the, you know, from the design center or from the Bragg library. However, if you do it like from the Bragg library, let me show you like how would you do that one and how you can pair it to the two palettes, yeah? The two palettes makes everything easier for you and it's, it's you know, your advice to use the two palettes because, you know, it makes, you know, the job faster. But, you know, 
you, let's say you don't, if you don't have the two pilots, you know, you have to run, you know, let's say you go to another, let's say you, you leave the city and you work, you know, maybe a consultant, they're going to have the same two pilots. You should be able to, having the proper understanding, you should be able to generate the data, the same data without, you know, having our custom two pilots, yeah. But the two pilots, they help you to do the right thing, you know. So now when it comes about, like, you know, the payment markings, you know, in payment markings, you can see that they have the symbology. Since you know that this one is appraising the VI, VI layer, VI strapping, you're going to know that, you know, there's a layer specific for symbology. And that one, if I go to do the layer manager, that one is the VI strapping symbol. So all the all the symbology that you're going to place, you know, that map from the aerial, that should be supposed to be placed in these layers, the VI strap symbol, yeah. So now in that one, I'm going to make this layer active. I'm going to show you how to do it, you know, the stack way. So the stack way, or, you know, the out-of-the-box way, you make the layer current, you're going to go to the design center, and you're going to have to find the library. In the library, you're going to find it under the block. So you're going to go to the, you know, since 2024 uh, or 2022, whichever you're stuck, you're going to have to block. And they're going to go here to the G markings. That's the block library for the markings. And they're going to go in here and look for the blocks. Now, in the blocks in here, you're going to see that, you know, this is the right churn arrow, yeah? So you're going to go here to the design center and change maybe from here, from this thing, you're going to change to large icon so you can see them maybe better. And and then in here, going to look for the for the strapping arrow, the one that turns to the right. You know, this one it seems to you know, this the yeah, the right. This this seems to be the the block for that one. Yeah. So you're going to select the block. You're going to right click on it. You can say insert the block. And when it says the block, you're going to ask you to where you want to specify it. On screen, I say click OK. You're going to place it, you know, at the location of that one. Yeah. So you can see the displays right there. And the only stuff we have to do in here, you're going to say to rotate the block. Right there. And then once it's rotated, you're going to take the block and you're going to put it, you know, where, where it's supposed to go. However, you're going to see that our blocks, you know, they have a, like some nice tools to them. You're going to see that, you know, they're not just simple blocks, yeah? If I take this, you know, you can do or rotate and stuff, or you can use those grips in here. You see, like, you know, you have two grips, this is a line block to object. So if I take this grip in here, I'm going to take in here and align with stuff, you can see that the lines, you know, this way to the, to the object, you know, we don't have stuff. We're going to use, you know, this grip. You can write in here, you can see it aligns this way. So you can do all, you can right away, you know, apply the rotation for the for the block, you know, right from here. So I'm gonna take this stuff from here and move it to the right location. So you send the block, then move it to the right location. So you know, if that would be the case, you know, let's say maybe uh, that's a right turn, you know, let's say for a left turn. So I'm go to the center, I'm gonna look to the left, I'm gonna say you set the block. I space file screen. I'm gonna put this stuff in you know, on here. Then I'm gonna take you know the grip, align it first. But you know you can see like depending on which side of the which side of the line you are, it you know flips it that way. So if I'm on this side, it flips it that way. If I move my cursor on the other side, you can see that it flips it the other way. So I'm gonna put it on the other side, and then it's as easy as just moving to the right location based on the area. So that's the way you do it. You know like if you do not have the two pallets, yeah, you have to insert the blocks. Make sure you're in the right layer. And just place the blocks yeah, for them. Yeah. Now, let's say if you have the two palettes, it makes it even much easier because it's almost, almost like a block library. So, if I come in here, this is a left turn lane. Of course, I can come in here and copy this one and rotate it, all that kind of stuff. However, I can go to the two palettes, GS, GS marking, and go on the bottom and find the right symbol that you want to lose. So, this is a left one, it's an arrow, left arrow. Click on that one and place it at this location. Now, you can see that you can ask you if you want to rotate it too, you know, at the same time. You can rotate it. Right there, once it's stopping, it's, it's as easy to just move it, you know, to the right location. I mean, like, you know, just a, a small adjustment, yeah? So, in here, the two palettes, you know, of course, in the block library, you have, you know, the same, you know, the same tools you can do from here. However, this one, they're placing the current layer. The two palettes makes it, you know, so it's everything standardized, you know? So, if I go in here and I say layer set to zero, so if the current layer is set to zero, if I go to the design center, to, you know, to the uh, design center, to add the block from here, you're gonna see that if I add the block, you know, for this is only, I'm gonna to go to the design center, finding the word only. So maybe I'm gonna change here to list, find stream ball, stripe word, and then it's uh, only. If I say here instead of the block, you're gonna see that it says the block on the current layer. It puts it on layer zero. And this is not what I'm looking at for, you know, too much because I'm always make sure I make sure it's standardized. So unless you know the layer is supposed to be play, you placed and you make it current, you're gonna put it in the layer is current, yeah? So. The benefit to the two pallets is that, you know, the data is already standardized. So coming to layer, it doesn't matter which layer you have it right now active, yeah? So the two pallets, 
I guess I want to put in our words. So I'm going to find the word only. So find the only. So this is the words and find the only. Place the only in the field and rotate it in our stuff. Of course, you can rely on a letter, but it's good to go, yeah? And then the same way, pretty much, you just go from here to the palette, find the left turn. So you have another one, place it in this location, you know, rotate it, and just, you know, realign it or adjust it a little bit, you know, stuff, because the blocks, you know, you hit that, you that line to the center, yeah? So like I said, the block for the right turn, of course, you can copy this one. You can always copy it. Since it's right there, you can copy this one in here, put it, you know, in here, the location. If you have this line work, so if I know that I will have that line work, so if I go to the two palettes, let me get fast. So it'd be an eight inch, eight inch uh, continuous. So it'd be an eight inch line work. I'm going to make it here nice. Let go. I'd be like, you know, maybe like this and stuff. I'm going to put, you know, an uh, arc, second point, and the second point, because it's an arc, it will come from here up to here, whatever. So this is my eight inch. So now I can use, you know, this one here, this block. I'm going to take, you know, this one. I'm going to align it, like, to, to make sure that it's, you know, parallel to that line work. Yeah, I don't want to make sure it's parallel to the line work. And then you hit the right turn. So I can go to the two palettes, insert the right turn. So be the right. I'm going to put in the first one in here. Like this stuff. I'm going to take it, you know, if I really want to make it align it, I'm going to take that one, align it first with And then place it in the right location. And I'm going to say copy from here. So copy now this stuff because it's in right there. And copy place in this location. And you might have to align it again, you know. So it would be like selected. And put it in here. Rather align it. And it's good to go, yeah? So, uh, so uh, that's how it's pretty much, you know, that's how it's done. You know, you have the symbology. Everything is, you know, available for you. All the, the stuff, you know, if you don't find anything. Or if you don't find, you know, some of the symbology, reach out. And this pretty much you know, reach out and we can add it you know, to our library. Yeah? So line work, as I said before, make sure that you know you have the right layer, put them in the right layer, make sure it's the dry power line width, and so on. And the symbology is it's easy, you just have it all in one layer, and um, you have it all in one layer, and uh, make sure that it's rotated, aligned, and beautiful, you know, to set up in nice to the area. Uh, and um, I guess I covered, you know, everything when it comes about the, um, pretty much about the payment, the payment marking base file. Now it comes about payment marking base file, as I said before, make sure that, you know, just you have enough data to cover your design purposes. Yeah, so you don't have to map, you know, the whole, as I said, you don't have to map, you know, the whole city, just map enough enough, you know, to cover what shows up on your sheets. Yeah, so if you need, you know, like a stuff, you know, you'll have to map it. Now at the end of the project, you know, if you want to be nice to other people, you can take all this data and stuff, you know, and send it over, and we can push it to the overall, you know, city map, you know. So we're gonna have an updated version of this stuff because, you know, if it's already done as part of the project, you know, it's it's beneficial to add it, you know, to an overall base file, and maybe it would be the case for us to work towards getting a city of Boston overall base file. But it's a, it's a, let's say people they do not have to map, you know, stuff over again for the same area. Yeah? But that's something for us to look at early down the road. But at this moment, you know, this is pretty much the workflow, you can adjust, you know, map the data, add the data, and you're good to go. Now, the final step that I said about this stuff is, as I said before, the pay, the line work, it's, uh, the line work for the of payment marking, especially the dash line work, it's it's not, it's not, it's not supposed to be annotative, you know, so if it's annotative, then you have to know how to deal with it, yeah, so because the bit one, let's see that, you know, if I come in here and change, you know, the line work, because they say I'm working on a, on a 20 scale, and you can see how this one uh, reflects in a little bit. Let's go to external references and let's look at um, one of the this side. Do I have anything here to kind of show the difference? Let's go in here to external references and unload the V A. Unload. Do I have anything in here? If this area ever shows up, uh, yeah, right here. You're gonna see beautiful. There's the best beautiful illustration. You can see that when it's set up, you know, on a one scale. When I set up on, on, I'm gonna say here control C first. When I set up on one scale, you can see, you know, the pen marking looks the right way. It's always good, you know. Pretty much, I mean, like the continuous line always looks the right way because we are continuous. However, the dash line, but look the right way, but, you know, the way we are supposed to do, you know. However, all the other line paths, but they don't look the right way. So if you look in here, let's see that you have a line path for electric overhead, yeah. So if I come in here, you're gonna see like, you know, if I change it here, like, you know, we know that everything is supposed to be in a 20 scale. If I go here and change, you know, the stuff to 20 scale. Now, what this one does to our, to, to our base file, it messes up the payment markings. Now, everything shows up continuous, yeah? 
is because you know AutoCAD it's using the alternative scale. So if I say to 20 scale, it you know you can see like you know for 20 scale the, the electric overhead looks the right way, and then it doesn't matter which scale I'm choosing to like you can say with the electric overhead you're gonna scale based on that scale yeah right there. However, this one affects you know the frame markings and the main frame markings should not be affected by you know by the line by the annotative scale yeah. Now for macro station this is easy because I can do an override to keep the scale you know, so pretty much to disregard. However, in AutoCAD you cannot do that one you know so the only way to do an override it would be for you to have a line types this is this is defined of a line type for the for the dash lines this is defined for that scale that you're using so if i have a 20 scale that means i'm supposed to have a line type for the 10 inch 30 that's defined for the for the 20 scale and that's how it's going to work and so if i use a 60 scale i'm going to have to have a line type defined for the 60 scale of the same stuff you know so it matches yeah so how this one reflect you know i say if this one it's a 20 scale that means i'm supposed to I'm supposed to fix the dashes, yeah? So to fix the dashes, I'll have to have a line type for the 20 scale for each of the line types, you know, like the dash, yeah? So if I go to layer manager, let's look for the 1030. So I go to layer manager, you can see that, you know, I can go to the the white, the the, the four inch, and I've got 1030. You're gonna see right now in here, you see like the line type, you use the striping for inch 1030. This one is the true one to one scale. So when you work on a one scale, this is the line type. However, I'm supposed to have a line type that is defined specific for the 20 scale for this specific, uh, you know, payment marking, yeah? So if I go here in the drop down, you're gonna see that, you know, you do not have it in here. You're gonna have to load it and stuff. So you're gonna have to load the 20, ver 20 scale version of this line type, yeah? So if I come in here to line type, and this would be like, you know, more or less, like this, would, this, this is gonna be taken care of, like, you have to taking care of this stuff when it comes about creating your payment marking uh, production files, yeah? So you have to be aware of this stuff. At this moment, you don't necessarily have to do it this stuff, but I'm gonna show you like, you know, how it will work, yeah? So if I go in here, I'm gonna say, maybe I'm gonna say an L2. I'm gonna create a layer state at this moment, and I'm gonna put this stuff, I call it the default, you know, or the original, the way it's supposed to be according to the standards, yeah? So I'm gonna say default, right there. So once I have the default, I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna load, you know, the one for the 20 scale. So if I go to layer manager, I'm gonna say line type, I'm gonna say load, and then from the file, I'm gonna look for the our our of Boston uh, line type file. You know, so we go to Autodesk, see the 3D 2024. If I go to support, see the line type, this is the line file. And then from here, you know, switch to the striping line types. Yeah, so right now you're gonna see that you know I have the striping and look for the four inch 1030. Right now you're here, you're gonna find it right here. So this is the 1030, you're gonna see that I have a version for the 10 scale. 20 scale, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, and 100. If you need anything besides this stuff, we're going to have to define it in our standards, you know, for support people. But by default, I assume that any of this stuff is going to surface or going to be enough for any of your needs, yeah? So, knowing that one, I'm going to know that I'm, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to load the, the 10, 30, 40, 20 scale, yeah? So, we can load that one. Now, that line type is loaded in the chat file. However, it's not applied to the layer. So, I'm going to go to layer manager. And then you're gonna to go to the 4 inch 1030. I'm gonna change it from the 1030 to 1030 on a 20 scale. And I'm gonna do the 20 to see if that he knows like, now I satisfy both the annotative and the non annotative yeah? For the 20 scale. So the, so in here like, you know, the the the, the 20 scale in here or the 20, let's go to the 20 scale here, because you know, we did stuff for you, Jen. The 20 scale, annotation scale took care of this one. Like you know, all the other line types, like you know, right away electric overhead and so on. However, for this one, you know, rather than taking the line type and changing the properties, because lots of people I've seen, I see them doing this type, you know, they're gonna take you know the object and they go to properties and they're gonna change here the line type scale to 0 0.05. You know, no, the lines we can always be in the one scale. However, the line type of the layer gonna change it you know, to you know as you need it for your project. Yeah, so it's gonna be a 20. Or a 40, or sometimes for the job you control this layer, like the 10. For, uh, this layer, you're gonna have like for example for the pay, uh, for the existing marking uh, uh, site conditions plan, you can have this stuff to have the tw the the 20 scale. However, the same layer for the traffic in the traffic control, you're gonna use maybe the 60 scale, yeah. So you're gonna pretty much you're gonna override that layer to use the 60 scale for the purposes you know in the 60 scale uh, production file, yeah. So what are the places in here gonna look in here? Maybe you're gonna see, you can see right here, this is the, the, the track in here. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to the, um, 
and say layers and look uh, and maybe sometimes you know you might be better to load all the line tabs you know so it would be like you know for inch to four and let's say maybe loading here and let's say file and go to line tabs and look here for all the striping and maybe you're gonna load all of them you know so you don't have to load every time you know so you're gonna do striping select all the striping section and right there gonna be right there stop it right location click ok you know, all the selected line tabs now all the extra line tabs are going to be available in the cat file. So right now I'm going to go in here and choose your style to be 20 scale. I'm going to come in here and choose your stuff also to be 20 scale. That version and here going to be like, you'll see like, you know, you have a couple of other ones, the, you know, the, the two, four and so on. So that's how we're doing here. I'm going to put like 20 scale. This is going to be the 20 scale. This is going to be the 20 scale for that line type. This will be the 20, the 20 scale for the line, line type. And this will be the 20 scale for the line type. And here you're going to have the same stuff. So pretty much this will be the 20 scale. This 20 scale. And layer states help you to achieve, you know, what you try to achieve, you know, for traffic control and stuff. You, don't, you, you can use the layer states to make it work for you. So this will be 20 scale also. And I guess I'm done because all the other ones, you know, got continuous lines, you know, you don't have to worry about them. So once I have this stuff, you know, done together, I'm going to say an L2, like, you know, pretty much layer states. And I'm going to make one called, it's called 20 scale. Just for your stuff, you know. So when I say like the 20 scale, I'm going to say close. I'm going to go here, maybe go to restore. So like, you know, on a one to one scale, so if I go here, let's say, go back to our place in here, it looks the wrong, the wrong way, this stuff. If I go here and let's change the annotation scale to uh, one scale, the you know the the, the style looks according to the standards the pill markers the right way this is how we're supposed to mark it at the beginning however for the 20 scale you can apply the layer state for the 20 scale so you can come in here say restore i'm going to say here regen and of course you know you're going to change the annotation scale here to a 20. put the right way for 20 scale you know, so depending on which you know scale you're going to use pretty much you're going to just make sure that use the override line type for that dash line you know if it's continuous you don't have to worry, worry about it but it's the dash line you have to do an override if you care about all the other line types to look the right way yeah because you know as i said before like you know there's no way in autocad to to let's say to eliminate a couple of line a couple of layers line types from having autocad apply the annotation scale to them yeah so that's the biggest consideration you're going to see like how this one better applies when it comes about traffic control you can see how it applies into production for uh, pay, uh for marking uh, pay marking and signing plans and and i'm going to pretty much reinforce the same uh, concept you know when you get to uh, uh, that step you know but this was just a reminder uh, for you to, you know to be aware about you know annotative line styles versus annotative line styles they should not be annotated you know which is the case of uh, payment marking yeah